purely the passengers on their journey. It's we're just there to help them stay on the road. Fantastic. One, two, three. Um, the 123 is about the time span, um, the worst incident, the last incident, um, and what was the first incident. I found that really useful in the first session. I think identifying the harmful behaviour, understanding the stages that it goes through can really give you a timeline of events, um, but it also allows you to understand um, events from the parents and carers' perspective. Um, and I just thought it was a really useful tool, um, and I'll definitely be using it in practice um, to kind of elicit very concise um, information and quite quickly. Thank you. Um, so, and also just for me to end um, the pictures, we've all got the screen on the background. Is it's Aboriginal art? It's um, um, I said when my time in Australia and spending some time on an Aboriginal camp and being true to signs of safety. This is where it came from. We really wanted just to represent that, and we're really, really thankful for the, um, for yours, um, you Rob and UK, and your support for these past five days. Thank you. Group two. Hi. So um, we've um, taken our lessons in by endorsing the. Um, model itself, the science and safety map model. So we're going to take it in each uh, in turn to explain um, what we feel from the science of our children's trust and perspective. Um, Viv? So we're starting with what's working well. So the things that we discussed about what's working well were the basic signs of safety is being used across Sam well in terms of the three columns, what's working well, what we're worried about and the next steps. Um, and it's evident from the past five days that we do do direct work with children. We do a lot of it and we do use the tools that are used within signs of safety approach. We do implement basic safety plans with families to identify how to keep the children safe. And we do look at the support networks via genograms, cultural genograms. And then I think to finish it off is just that actually as a, us being the people that have volunteered to do this advanced training that we're showing that we do identify that things need to change and that you know we are willing to put the work in for that to happen. Over to what we're worried about signed by children's trust and the signs of safety approach. Yeah so what we're worried about what we identified was that scaling has been used too vaguely um, and it's not always specific enough in, in meetings to, to the actual issues being discussed at the time. Um, science of safety is not consistently implemented through all teams um, in terms of use of bottom lines, for example, or scaling or use of direct work tools. And we're also worried about science of safety training not necessarily being delivered at all levels within Samwell Children's Trust. Over to what needs to happen. Yeah, so what we said, what we still need to happen next in Samwell Children's Trust is that all managers have taken the science of safety training so that they're able to support the practitioners and the champions to embed signs of safety across their, the practice and how they work. Um, that um, basically that the practitioners and, and social workers and key workers are given the time and the space that to reflect on how we can strengthen signs of safety um, in how we work. That, you know, it's a family led process is what needs to happen next instead of it being process -less led. So our processes and our systems need to change to reflect that, that it is family led. Um, and also that it's just clear in the transition and the flow when we have, when we move from service to service or different support agencies, that there's a flow, a clear flow, flow with, for the families that they understand why that's taken place. So this is a danger statement that we feel the children and families of Sandwell um, would put to us as a trust. For all children and families to feel supported by Sandwell Children's Trust, Sandwell Children's Trust need to ensure that they tell parents the bottom line and include creating an explanation for children about why Sandwell Children's Trust are worried about their safety and well-being. This will then empower families to build an informed network with families, which will further build a vision for them and develop safety plans. The children and families of Sandwell need Sandwell Children's Trust to plan their work through the use of tools like family circles, words and pictures, and this will be fed back into regular review meetings. Thank you. Oh, yeah. hey, beautiful. Love it. Well done. Love that. Uh, group three, I guess. Yeah, I think we were group three, but we like to refer to ourselves as the Turvets after our dedicated leader, Andy Turvey. Um, so we broke down what we've what each of us have taken away from the last five days into a quick 30 second roundup. So I chose the danger safety statements and the scaling. I found that for me, it's been the most useful having not done signs of safety before I'd come to Sandwell. Um, although it seems simple, I now understand it's so much better and it's really an effective way of breaking down the issues of a case 
and coming up with simple but effective ways of keeping children safe and happy within their families or their parents' care or whoever that might be. Um, I'm going to be taking this forward um, with my student who will be starting next week because I'm going to be her practice supervisor. So I'm going to use it to practice it a lot more with her and then I can feel a lot more comfortable, confident about distributing it through my team. But um, So I'm going to embed it in our supervisions and then hopefully it will help her not to feel so overwhelmed with risks and tasks that need to be done because she'll be able to, you know, I can show her how to write them down and how to delegate them and, you know, that sort of, um, and just see what the real issues are really. So that's what I've taken from that. Mine is the uh, bottom line and the importance of putting the bottom line in um, and um, I'm going to be speaking to my staff about it because sometimes I think we can be um, set our standards too high for uh, the families of Samwell. So I think giving families uh, realistic goals and not unrealistic goals to set their uh, personal uh, ex expectations, being inclusive, uh, giving families and young people hope and a finish line. Um, is really important, including families in their own progress and giving them responsibility to take ownership of their own safety goals um, and clear understanding to uh, how to keep themselves and their children safe. It is important to explore and understand safety networks from the onset of the case. This involves knowing the professionals involved with the family and all the family members who are around the child or the children. This means identifying who is important to keep the child safe. It uh, means establishing who can do what within the professionals and all the family members. It also helps to, es to establish the existing strengths and the existing safety. It will involve the child's voice as part of this exploration and the understanding and, and also the, the views of the parents. And this means the child and the family will continue to take lead in establishing their own safety networks. Uh, following on from the, the safety networks, I just wanted to highlight that what I found most useful or what came across to me was about um, the family taking ownership of, of their plan and rather than the social worker um, being very process led and um, setting unreal unrealistic expectations is the family take ownership and highlight their concerns and what they can do to keep um, the child safe. So one of the, the questions that we went through earlier was about the, the one person we trust with our family and, and the best worker that we've ever worked with. And for me, that's Elaine Shaw, and we've done a piece of work together, and she is very family focused. And the way the family responded to her was just fantastic. So I think that's what I'll take on board, definitely. Okay, so it's me next. Um, my name's Marie, and I'm a team manager at Eden to Keep. Um, and what I've reflected on over the last five days is about all of the tools that I've got that um, actually originated from Science and Safety that I haven't been using. Um, and obviously in Sandwell and in any authority, what we are trying to do as managers is improve practice, which in turn improves outcomes for the children and the families that we're working. Um, so at the moment, what I've got is um, a weekly um, team meeting. And what I'm going to be doing to embed the group supervision is turn every other meeting into a group supervision meeting. Um, so when I reflected back on what I've done in other authorities, some of the best practice that I've actually had as of my work has been following a group supervision when you're a social worker you can get very drawn in to um, a case that you're working with and it's very difficult sometimes to slow down and to look at it from different perspectives and that's what's really helpful from the group supervision because you use your colleagues and everything else to look at it from those different perspectives and sometimes you can come up with or realize things that you might not do um by yourself um and so that's my little part of this so we are called the amazing four and we've done ours as a little bit, we done, we use words and pictures because that's what we're going to take from it the most. So we've done it day by day in terms of what we learn and how we felt about it. So I don't know if you can all see this, but this is me trying to draw and talk. So on um, Wednesday was when we all met each other and we all had our big hellos. We then learned how to slow down, how slow and fast thinking informs our practice. And we said, slow it down, it's much better. 
We then learned about how group supervision is great for informing our practice and how it will help us to share our ideas with our groups and to make conscious decisions from the slowing and the fast thinking. We also spoke about how the harm matrix has supported and will support our practice moving forward and how we will be able to draw it out with families and implement it into those more, more juicy cases. We then put there our YouTube videos because we found that the, watching the YouTube videos really helped us to think about things and think about us as practitioners and especially the first video. I think it all made us think about the fact that we can become the service user or someone in our family can become the service user. So, you know, um, how would we deal with that and how would we cope with that and how would we implement our professionalism and, and make sure that we are the service user and we're not trying to still be the professional. So we spoke about that. Here's my um, signs of safety house. <laughs> that <laughs> I thought I'd try to draw. But um, that it's just, it is a house and it does bring you all together and it does make it all gel and fuse together. And I think the thing about signs of safety and looking at the house is we need to remember that we are going into people's homes with these signs of safety. So, you know, that's what, that's like a key point in this practice and in this theory so when we doing our signs of safety we can't forget our danger statement our safety goals and our scaling zero to ten so we've got to go away with that and yet then our the strengths in our scaling and questions um and how we always need to think about that so that's why that's in a bubble there so we're making sure that we always think about it then it was friday so we thought yay it's friday <laughs> and we all got a time to to breathe and think about what we had learned over the past two days then we turned over and we had day three and there's my roadmap because we learned our roadmap and there's my line for the bottom line because that's what we done and then we we were really um serious about this part is the fact that we should always remember that we are facilitators and not doers and you know our role we need to always stay focused on our role we, we spoke about the fact that you get a lot of professionals that call us and they'll say oh why is it we think this should be on a child protection plan or we think you need to go to legal planning and it's like slow your horses let's rein it in this is what we're going to be doing and we're the professional here we're the social workers so we know how to measure risks it's our bread and butter so we spoke about how much we've learned about that then on day four, they said that they missed me. So I had to put a bubble where we miss you to me, which is why I'm doing this all by myself now. <laughs> but um, they told me that yesterday, um, they learned about drawing and words and pictures. So can I even draw though, is a big question that we ask ourselves and are we artists? But as long as we help the child to understand what we're drawing, as you can see, we've used stick men here. So stick men are fine and it works. And as long as they understand and it's their plan, that's all that matters. Um, and safety planning as well, ensuring that even the children and the family have their safety plans and that we, we, we drill that into them that, you know, these are your plans. They're, they're not, it's not just to tick a box, it's for you and it's yours. Um, and then today, and um, we learn our appreciative inquiry. So that was really useful. We'll need to dig into that a bit more reflection 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 one thing we haven't learned this over the last few five days we're definitely going to take away that reflection on practice is key because that's what makes us we're never going to know everything we're going to make mistakes but how can we make it better the next time and we've drawn ourselves a trophy and a medal because after this we're going to be champions so we are champions now <laughs> And yeah, we'll just take it back to group supervision and sharing our knowledge. So there's group four. <laughs> Thank you, Tamika. <laughs> Can I just add something, please? Um, I, I second everything Tamika said because we did it as a group. But I just wanted to say that yesterday, when we, I think it was yesterday morning, when we went into different breakout groups, um, I found that difficult and it put me completely out of my um, comfort zone. And I think if we adapt that to families, we are strangers going into their houses. And we've got to understand that it's difficult for them. So we've got to break that barrier and ensure that we've prepared. Yeah, that's, wow. Really good point. Really good point, Michelle. Well done. 